So I want to take a minute to talk a little bit about something that no one really wants to talk about, which is uh, profiling and performance inside of Unreal Engine. And I just want to walk you guys through just a really, really quick appended version of how to use a program called RenderDoc so that you can start profiling your Unreal Engine 4 games and fixing any of the performance problems that you might be facing. So let's just get to it here. The first thing you're going to want to do to um, use RenderDoc is you're actually going to want to download it. So just end up going to Google, um, type in RenderDoc, it'll be the first link to come up. It's a very quick install and it'll just be on your PC. Once you've done that, you'll be inside your Unreal project here and you'll come into Edit and Plugins. And from here, all you need to do is search for RenderDoc, just like this. That's again what the name would be on the website. And you want to enable this. And as soon as you click enable, it's going to ask you to restart the engine. Make sure you do. And once you restart your engine, everything will look exactly the same. But the only thing that'll be different, you have this little weird kind of button here now, a little like circle with a little, like a little guy almost. And what happens is anytime now that I want to kind of profile what I'm seeing here, I'm going to hit F11 to full screen it. And I'm going to click on this little uh, render doc button and give it just one second to think. And we might be asking, well, what is RenderDoc and wh why do I even care? Well, for today's lesson, we're just gonna mainly stick to how this can help you kind of find some draw call problems, which are probably the most common issue you're gonna face when trying to use this tool. Now, this render RenderDoc is amazing. It can do tons of stuff and we can cover that later, but I just wanna show it from like a real basic level. So now that you've installed RenderDoc, you got this loaded up, you're gonna see like a little screen down here. And this is the thing we just captured, okay? And you'll see if we, we were to spin the camera in here, um, let's just say like for, you know, for whatever reason we had this, I clicked on the RenderDoc button again, and uh, now, there you go. So now you'll see like we had the one capture of the second capture, and you can always um, save these off as well. So if you wanted to keep them for like, um, history in your project, you could do that. But we'll just get to it. So I'm gonna open up this first one by double clicking on it. It'll just take a second to kind of think through what it needs to do here. And what you're gonna notice is over here on the left-hand side, we kind of have this list that's called an event browser. And you can think about this as every single action that happened to end up fully rendering the scene from the camera we just saw for that one frame, right? Because when we captured it, we're kind of like capturing one moment in time. And the easiest thing to keep this short is that you're gonna come in here and you're gonna see these EIDs, you're gonna see draw number. If you don't see this, um, you can. if you don't see draw number right here, you can do right, you can right click on EID and set select columns, and then just make sure that draw number right here, select columns, Make sure draw number is enabled. And what what draw numbers are, are actually the draw calls. So this will tell you exactly how many draw calls your entire scene takes to create itself. Okay, so each one of these numbers. So each one of these instructions and each one of these lines might take a few more or, or less draw calls, but we'll stick to it and keep it simple. So you're gonna most likely open up your scene. And what we're really looking probably for just in terms of this is your base pass. So base pass is like all your geometry kind of. And I'm gonna full screen this, just to make it a little clear. And inside here, once I click on any one of these objects, I'm also in this thing called a texture viewer. And this is gonna make it a little easier for us to see kind of what's going on. But if I if I click over here on like one of these tree branches, right? And then I just use the, the up and down arrows, you see as if as I click in the middle here, and it might be a little hard to see. Um, let me see if I can like brighten this up. There's a little range slider here. It just like helps brighten up your images. It's more useful for like depth buffer stuff, but um, I'm just gonna use it to help you see what's going on. So every time I click, you'll notice as I'm kind of going down, things are kind of appearing. And if I kind of go kind of quick, uh, cause there's a lot, you'll just see things kind of seem like they're loading in. And you can also see over here, all the other buffers. And what's interesting about this is that we're basically stepping through all the different draw calls. So again, you can see here, this is draw call 654 and 364. So it's just one draw call for that one thing to render. Um, you see here all the lights get added. And there's a couple things that's useful about this. So let's go back to the top and see where it started. So I'm gonna set my range slider back to zero and one, just so it doesn't mess with the colors. Sometimes it's be really hard to see, like, did it just draw something? Like if I click through these first couple, right? They're like kind of hard to see. 
So there's this overlay mode right here. And uh, sometimes I set it to highlight draw call and it just makes it bright purple. Um, and so that way when we like step through, we can see exactly what got drawn and where. And so the next thing you might be asking yourself is like, okay, well, what do I do with this information? Now that I can step through and I can, I can very quickly just kind of like keep tabbing, tabbing, tabbing to see like each part get drawn. So what, what do we do with this information? And just to keep this one short and simple, one thing we can look at here is around the tree, which was in the middle of our shot, we had some grass. And as you see, if I kind of stem through these few little draw calls here, you can see that the tops of the flowers and the, the stems are different calls. And what you may, if you're new to performance and optimization, you might be asking, well, what's the big deal with draw calls? Why is it such a problem? And the really quick answer is that every time you um, issue a command to your GPU, so say like, please draw this, and it usually has to do with new materials. You, you incur what's like a state change on the GPU. It's kind of like if you were multitasking and you were like working on math and all of a sudden I said, please now start reading a book. Oh, can you please now do this? Can you please now do this? It's like hard for the computer to keep changing what it was doing and calculating. Whereas like, something that's all the same or one command, your GPU can like crank out really fast. So the optimization we'll just talk about really quickly is seeing these little grass. And now I'm using this analytical tool to decide, oh, these flowers are made out of a lot of little components. Um, now that I can see it's, it's, it's happening over multiple draw calls. So I'm just gonna pop back to the engine real fast. And I'm gonna take a look at that asset and I'm gonna just see how it's constructed. So when I first click on it, you're gonna see it's in a blueprint. And so you might be like, oh, it's all being ran at the same time. It's like, no, the blueprint's doing some funky stuff underneath the hood in terms of building the foliage. So I'm just gonna open this up and I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper. Okay, perfect, right here. So as you can see, I've kind of dug into, these are the different meshes that are being spawned. But if you remember like the flowers, these HR grass before were being rendered in different parts. So let me open it up. And here we will see that this flower is actually calling two different materials. And kind of a general rule of thumb is that each material will always incur a draw call. So you might be asking yourself like, well, how could I fix this? Well, the first way you could optimize this down would be that it looks like they're using some kind of like variation on the like top for probably a color shift. Uh, I'm guessing that's how they're getting like the yellow versus the white flowers. You would just bake all that into one texture, make one material, which referred to like a texture atlas. So having all your variations on one texture so that this could be one material. And as soon as it's one material, this one object, you've now just reduced your draw calls by one. The next optimization you would do that render dot got us would be taking these meshes that you've turned into one draw call. And if I go back to my scene, remember that uh, Unreal Engine is randomly placing this grass through blueprint, so they're not all combined. But what you would wanna do is possibly take all these meshes and actually uh, merge them together. So for example, let's say that I um, just dragged in, uh, just something for example, let's just drag in this uh, sign, pull this right here. So if I had this sign, right, I can control C, control V, I can duplicate it. And let's duplicate it one more time. And technically, even though they have the same material, but, but they're independent objects, um, there is something called instance meshing, but let's just ignore that for now. This would be considered three draw calls, okay? But if I come in here and I click on them and I go to merge actors and I can just use the first one. We won't talk about this today, but basically this will just try to converge them into um, one object. So merge actors. I'm gonna just, it'll ask you to make like a new object. We're just gonna call this merged, um, really dirty like for just testing. Save it. And now what you'll see is in my scene, I still have the three, but if I drag this actor in, I now have them as a single static mesh, and I just reduced the draw calls from three draw calls to one draw call, because even though it's the same geometry, the way the, the graphics card looks at this is one mesh, whereas this looks at it as one, two, three meshes, okay? So I hope this makes sense at kind of getting you started using render doc and understanding a little bit of the very, very early steps of performing optimizations in inside Unreal Engine. If you like this, hit the like button, subscribe. 
I'll see y'all in the next one. Cheers.